The fastest way to become a better developer is learning the correct tools. And it's one of the biggest lessons I've learned as a programmer. Today, I'll show you the tools that I use both personally and professionally, and the ones that I believe that every engine programmer should know about. Be sure to stick around to the end of the video, because as a bonus, I will reveal exactly which libraries I use for almost all of my projects which also might be what is going to make or break your career. All right, let's start at the very beginning with the most essential tool for any engine programmer at all, and that is RenderDoc. If you're a graphics programmer and don't know what RenderDoc is, you've probably lived under a rock, but that's fine. That's what this video is for. RenderDoc is the most lightweight, easy to use graphics debugger. Its power really shine in how easy it is to spot errors in your application. All established graphics programmers know about RenderDoc, so whenever they're gonna help you out, they will always refer to RenderDoc. And that's a big reason why you should learn it in the first place. Although there are other profilers out there, RenderDoc crushes the competition when it comes to features and ease of use. It also has integration with C++ so that you can inject it into your program, which is a great way to put markers down and actually know what's happening in the pipeline. For version control, I use Git. However, previously I used Perforce and I believe that we should shine some light on it. Perforce is popular in game development because it can handle large files like models, audio and textures way better than Git can. It's a key tool in AAA game development. So if you're serious about your career, you should definitely learn it. That said, personally and at work, Git is the choice for us. Mostly because of the simplicity. For Git, I recommend a free tool called Fork. It gives a great visual interface that I find way easier to handle than the command line. I know a lot of developers choose to not use the graphics interface because they can just use the command line instead it's, and it's quicker for them. But for someone like me, I just think it's way easier to have something visual in front of you. The one downside with Git is its built-in merge tool. So instead, I prefer using Perforces. Git really is great and it's really easy to use when you do personal projects. But because the game industry tends to lean towards Perforce, I believe that you should take that into account when you try to learn. Now for where I do most of my work, the IDE I use, which is Visual Studio. The reason I use Visual Studio instead of VS Code is because of how badly integrated VS Code is with solution projects, settings and debugging. The arguments I've heard against this is that VS Code is really lightweight, but in order to get the features that I need, I need to install like hundreds of extensions and use CMake, which just isn't worth the hassle for me. For smaller scripts, JSON and other writable files, I use Notepad++. While VS Code is great in some places, Notepad++ is just good in all cases. And just don't even get me started on the search functionality. The search functionality is even so good that I use it to search files on Windows because Windows search functionality is shit. It's incredibly fast and it's so easy to use. So I really recommend you checking out Notepad++. It works particularly well if you have files with different file extensions like .material, .script, .whatever. VS Code isn't the only editor out there. And if you take C++ seriously, I would highly advise you to consider Visual Studio instead. And for smaller files and a lightweight editor, Notepad++ is a great choice. Now back to some more graphics debugging. When RenderDoc isn't sufficient and I really need to get into the nitty gritty of performance, I go to Pix and Insight. And in some rare cases when I work with AMD GPUs, I go to Radeon's graphics profiler. Usually my workflow goes like this. I start with RenderDoc and establish what the problem is. Then if I need more details, especially if I do CPU and GPU profiling, I go to Pix. If I see something with the GPU that it's not correctly utilizing things, I head over to Insight. And on Insight I can review what each hardware component on the GPU is doing and I can see what the bottlenecks are, so that I know what to optimize in my shaders and my pipeline code. Now onto tools that I use for various resources. Open3Mod and TextConv. Open3Mod is my go-to model viewer because it uses a simp as import. It's lightweight and it's faster than Blender, which makes it great for debugging things in the pipeline and mostly just lets me answer the question, is it my code that's faulty or is it the model? 
Textconv is my texture converter of choice. Depending on what you use as input arguments, the Textconv do different things. This is great because you can open your image and check for information such as which channels you want to use and what type of color interpretations you want. And then you can feed that into the texture converter which will give you a DDS with the corresponding information inside. This is exactly what we did in school in our engine. Unity opened the textures as Targa or PNG, read some of the pixels and determine how it should convert the texture into DDS format. Open3Mod and Texture Converter is the two biggest tools I use for resource handling. Open3Mod, just like Notepad++, is just a lightweight version for me to preview the models, while TextConv is just a great way for me to convert textures with arguments that I specify myself. And now, let's transition into build automation. I'm sure this is going to piss off a lot of people, but I use Premake and not CMake. Mainly because I'm familiar with it, and because it's easy, and that's also why I recommend it. It's simpler according to me, it still does its job, and it's a great way to introduce you into build automation, without the complexity of CMake. While CMake is more standard, Premake just does the job for me right now. A build automation system like Premake or CMake helps with linking together libraries, code and projects. It configures, generate, compiles, links and manage dependencies. And most of these steps Visual Studio already do with its solution file and project files and that's probably why I haven't touched CMake yet because Premake and Visual Studio is enough for me. I use Premake to generate and link projects as well as generate filters and settings for shaders. And it's not really necessary because you can do that all by hand, but if you want to redistribute your project on, let's say, GitHub, you really need some kind of build automation. I've struggled with the urge to switch to the latest tools, even though I know tools that already does the job and that I don't need to move on towards. And I see this in a lot of other software developers. That's why I recommend trying Premake first before going into CMake, especially if you use Visual Studio as your ID. If it doesn't meet your needs, or if you want to learn the actual build automation, I really suggest you going into CMake. And now maybe a bit boring and a little bit oversaturated tool, which is how I track, how I visualize and how I share information. And that's with Notion, Miro and Figma. And before the obsidian stands attack me, I've tried it and it's cool. But Notion's biggest advantage is how widely it is used. It's the go-to for most people, because having everything on the same place is really important for me. For visual things, my team uses Figma and Miro. I use both, although I leaned more into Figma recently with doing project structure, ideation and thumbnail design. All of these tools are used professionally and like everywhere, so I really suggest just learning them all. Another tool that is used a lot professionally, which I also use, is Unreal Engine. Now don't get too happy, because I don't use it how you think I do. Unreal Engine is a great tool, no doubt about it. But the greatest thing with Unreal Engine is how well it is for graphics pipeline and how good it is for user interface. But why I use it so much is because of how they structure the rendering and tools for user experience. This makes Unreal the best tool to borrow from. And that's exactly what I use it for. When I create a new feature, systems, or I design tools and UI, I always look if Unreal has already done it. And if it has, I can just replicate how the user interface is on that. I almost never look at code from Unreal, but I always look at the user interface. I hate small UX design decisions, and the artists love when it's similar to Unreal, so it's really a win-win. Now, another engine that I use, also not for the reason that you think, is Unity. I make games and custom game engines, and instead of using Unity as your game engine, you instead use it as your level editor. I use specific data in the Unity scene, such as entities, components, models and textures, and then I export it into my own scene format that I load into my engine. This is perfect for any 3D scene, which is almost all of my projects right now, but for 2D I instead use Tiled and LDTK. 
and I must say they really serve their own purpose. Tiled is really good when it comes to side-scroller, whilst LDTK is really good for top-down, and especially RPGs. You really can use tools in ways that they are not meant to be used. I never thought of using Unity as a level editor, but it kind of makes sense. In a perfect world I would like to make it all in my own engine, but now for the time being, Unity already has such great capabilities as an editor, so why not just use it? Now for the ultimate tool that I use, are which libraries I use. And this might sound cringy, but the best way to work smarter and not harder is to not reinvent the wheel and instead use the works that others has put in into libraries. People spend their entire careers making really great libraries. So if you were to make that from scratch, that would already take your career up. And then on top of that you want to do something else and that's just not gonna happen. So really use the work that others has put in. For the love of God, please, please use libraries. And especially in things that you don't want to delve deep into. Otherwise you risk becoming the opposite of what companies want. Someone that specialized in nothing. As for which tools I use. These are the following. Dear I'm GUI. If you need a quick, easy to use UI, look no further. It's fast to set up and it's really just a no brainer. Next up, ENTT. A life saving entity component system, which is easy to set up and runs really efficiently. Simple math. Let's just say that I've tried making my own math library and when it comes to making it efficient, you really need to know how to sim efficiently. And that's where I just got lost. So use a math library like simple math. FMOD, my go-to for any audio integration, both for the application, but also for the integration. FreeType for fonts and Nolman for JSONs. Although sometimes I use rapid JSON for speed. DirectX text for DDS loading and STB image for any other type of texture formats. A sim for model loading. Although FBX SDK is fine, there's just so much more like word of mouth documentation on a simp, so it's just so much more easier to use. Physics, for doing physics. Other libraries that I know are really good, but I have yet to experiment with are SpearV for shader translation, Lua for scripting, Recast Detour for nav mesh and pathfinding algorithms. Low level programmers often fall in the trap of making everything from scratch, but I really suggest you using the things that people have spent endless hours developing to your advantage instead. Instead of spending your entire life creating tools that already exist and that you don't really care about also, just use them instead and focus on the things that you like to do. That is the fastest way to be a better developer. These tools have helped me tremendously working in project both personally and professionally. What has also been incredibly helpful to use these tools is knowing the graphics pipeline by heart. That's why I believe you should watch this next video that covers that topic in depth.